So I just had a conversation with my coach, Roger. He's the head coach of the Zen Dad Method, and we got into some stuff. And we just wanted to really wrap our head around some of the ideas about what men are going through right now and and what some of the things that masculinity is going through. And we we talked about this uh, a bunch of times, about having these open conversations with dads. And after today, I am 100% convinced that this is something that we need to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to post our conversation for you guys to watch. And if you have questions, if you want to be part of the conversation, if you want to jump on the Zoom call with us, if you want to send your videos in with questions, if you want to text message them into me, send them on DMs, whatever it is, send your dad questions into us. And we're going to address those things uh, one-on-one with Roger live or we're jump in and have a a, a conversation between me and a bunch of other dads, men out there. And we're going to really deep dive into those topics for men. So this is our conversation. I want you guys to pay attention to what the energy is in this conversation and how we tackle things as healthy, masculine men who are not toxic, who are honorable, who have integrity, who are looking to be a positive force in the world for themselves, their families, their children, and society, because that is the goal of what we're doing with the Zen Dad Method. So this is just a off-the-cuff conversation that we had, and it is deep and powerful and impactful. So buckle up for this one. So... I think the synergy between the two of us, we're going to do this, this show where we're going to talk about being a dad, you know, what is it to be a dad in this modern age? And he's like, Oh, you and Roger are going to do that. You guys are so different. And I'm like, yeah, we're so different. I'm like, I'm all this crazy energy. And I come in and, you know, <laughs> and Roger's going to like calm everybody the fuck down so that we can actually get some results. And I explained to him like our, pretty much our standard coaching calls for the last couple of years have been, we get on a call and I jump in and I go fucking bad shit crazy for about 15 minutes. And I'm like, what do I do, Roger? And then you go, first thing we do is we breathe, Jay. Let's take a breath. And you like, calm me right the fuck down so I can just actually do some work. And, and, you know, grab on to what's going on in my life and make some changes that I need to change. And I think that's beautiful. I think that sums up our relationship perfectly. I think that there's real genius in that because it allows each person to play right within the arena that they have their strength, not trying to be something that they're not. And I think that what we're offering is enough diversity within the energy set and enough age difference between us and the fact that I'm now grandpa versus dad Mm. right all of those dynamics set apart two completely different ways of analyzing the same thing that somebody might call in and be confused a little bit about there's a lot of confusion going on out there my god look it's it's just straight up confusion jay right So if we can bring a little balance to all of that and give people the chance to take in a really nice deep breath and sigh and go, oh, man, these guys have offered me something that just applied that to my kids this week. My whole week just completely changed. I'm down. And it's it's just going to synergistically grassroots explode like that because I think we have all those metrics dialed in. Perfect. Perfect. I could tell you one of the hot buttons right now is what the kids are learning in these ultra liberal moments of time in school. (laughs) Yeah. Like I had a, I I saw a town hall meeting where it was a, I believe it was a woman and she has one of the books that the school has said is a curriculum book. So they're, they're there to, she's there to point out that this book is outrageously inappropriate for the age of the students and she starts reading it it's pornography and it's not even soft porn and it's like a transgender male with another male kind of idea 
And I yep. think the target audience was sixth graders. That means you're around 12, bro. Yeah. Right? She starts reading it, and the school board that approved the book says, stop, that's inappropriate for a school board meeting. And she says, if it's inappropriate for a school board meeting, then it's inappropriate for the classroom. She yeah. was removed by police officers. Yeah, it's ridiculous. These are these are emerging topics that I never had to deal with. And you might. Well, I'm literally dealing with this situation right now with her transition. And I I sent her an email yesterday. Uh, it got really heated between the two of us about me not understanding her world. And I'm like, no, I don't understand what it is to be a trans woman in small town. Like these, these are decisions that you made. And to me, there's so many ways I could go with this because this was one of my best friends. And I feel like this person now that I'm, I'm talking with has taken that friend away from me and replaced it with this victimized bitch. And I'm like, this isn't the friend that I, I know and love and trust. This is a completely different person, but I'm expected to have the same level of respect and communication. And like, I don't have that friendship anymore, but the expectations are there of, because of it. And it's like, I, I need to have a whole new relationship or even do I, because there are so many things that this person does that do not align with me at all. And I don't agree with it. But there, there's like this obligation because of a history with a, a, a completely different person as far as I'm concerned. So what are the responsibilities here? Because when I think about it, I think that she has done so much mental psychological damage to her kids. Like it's huge what's going to happen to those kids and, and how fucking messed up that's going to make them. And right now, that's all they know. But when they figure it out in five years, 10 years, and they're like, holy shit, what the fuck happened? It's going to be a lot for them to digest mentally. You know, there's going to be a, a ton of work that they're going to have to do just to get through the demons that their parents are giving them. That's a lot. So I don't know when it became okay to sexualize children with all of this information, because that's what it is. You're sexualizing children by bringing this kind of content in there. That's not okay. But because transgender people are doing it, we have to support them and treat them equally. Well, that's not equal now. That's you're you're going to you're going way beyond what's acceptable. Way beyond what's acceptable. Why are you bringing that into to grade schools? Why? I think in grade schools, you have to learn about the body and, and the functions of it. But there are so many other things beyond that are going to be learned in older years, in teen years. But this is not something for my eight-year-old to be exposed to. It's not something that my eight-year-old is, is going to be able to comprehend. I am a 45-year-old man who's lived a fucking crazy life. And I am having a hard time wrapping my head around all the nuances around changing your sexuality and everything that comes along with it. And people that are doing it are having a hard time in their own worlds handling it. And we're expecting children to understand the complexities in this. Not a fucking chance. It's your job as a parent to protect your kids from shit like that, right? It's like saying, hey, you know what? This person really agrees and identifies as a psychedelic drug user, let's introduce that into the schools so that kids can understand the concepts around psychedelic drug use and therapy for MDMA and mushrooms and LSD. And no, they're not, they're not there yet. They're not there yet. And let's understand that it's our responsibility to protect our children's childhood. That's the key here. I don't care what you do in the bedroom or what you believe your sexuality is or your gender is, that's your fucking business. Keep it to yourself. That's fine. I don't walk around putting my sexuality on other people because it's not acceptable. And that's kind of where I'm at right now in my understanding of it all. So I don't know if that rant would be a good one to go off on, but that's kind of where I'm at. 
because I'm not against it. Do whatever the fuck you want. Don't bring it to my house, though. Don't bring it to my kids. They're not ready for that shit. Exactly. There's so much dichotomy taking place and division taking place. You know, we have flags now that celebrate different ethnicities and different gender identification. We have all these things, you know, when we think about relationships, relationships, all relationships ebb and flow. Sometimes we're in a match vibrationally with another human being, and that's awesome. And then they have a shift. They go in a different direction. And we're no longer in that same vibrational frequency. We can consider it. And then we can say, yeah, you know, that's not for me anymore. And the relationship just moves apart. This happens all the time. People get married. They get divorced. Why did they get divorced? Ooh, the frequency just shifted. Sometimes relationships and friendships are just exactly the same way. Someone makes a decision and you say, well, good for you. Go live your life the way you want to live it. But that's not for me. And I don't have to be dragged along with you out of any obligation or some weird sense that you're oppressed, therefore you should get center stage spotlight and everyone should know about it. Imagine if I said, hey, everybody, I am throwing together a white heritage parade. You have to be <laughs> Caucasian and of European descent, and we're going to walk down the street holding our we're happy we're white people. Right? The world would lose its mind. Yeah. lose yeah. its mind but it's okay if you're an oppressed race or an oppressed gender to have your parades and do anything you want outrageously well we're watching the result of this grand social experiment and things are beginning to de-evolve and dramatically so and when we're all divided we can never come together Many times, both sides actually want the same thing, to be able to live our life in peace and harmony, but don't shove it down someone else's throat. You don't want my pride in being a European Caucasian jammed down your throat any more than I want your fundamentalist Christian perspective shoved down my throat or your gender perspective shoved down my throat. And don't tell me that I'm biased and filled with hate because as a man, I don't want to date a transgender person. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, right? it See, the thing me. about it is you're just projecting your shit on everyone else. And at the end of the day, you wonder why you have only people who are in that frequency as friends. And even then, those are tumultuous relationships. So Ooh. as parents... We have a twofold thing here. Number one, we have to have really clear boundaries and be okay with it. I say set a boundary after you've explored it. Someone has brought something challenging. You have a reaction to that. Okay, cool. Let me step back because in a reaction, I have information. If I just step back for a minute and explore it, I may learn something about myself. It doesn't mean I have to change my mind in any way, shape, or form, but it means I'm going to explore it. When I'm done exploring it, I say, nope, here's where my line in the sand is with that. And that's the end of it. You can either accept that or don't. And we can go away or continue moving forward. That's for me. That's for Roger. Where I get a really a little bit wrapped around the axle. And your point is so key, Jay. It's like, we are responsible for our children. We're parents. Do I allow my kids to go play with the kids that are now having this new experience as their parent changes to something else? Mm -hmm. Do I allow my kids to play at that house anymore? That's a huge, that's a huge thing. And this is, this is happening to more and more people, right? So, so the challenges here are profound, but my advice to everybody would be, first of all, you don't owe your relationship anything. If it moves beyond your boundaries, you're not obligated to simply fold everything in your life that you believe in to coddle this other person. Sorry, move on. Just move on. That's what relationships do. Sometimes they come together. Sometimes they don't. Move on. Do never sacrifice your belief system because of someone else trying to jam it down your throat. That's number one. Number mm -hmm. two, you get reactive. Good. There's something to learn there. Step back. Analyze that a little bit. Take a deep dive into the reaction. And then move forward because you're going to move forward in response. 
and you're not going to burn things to the ground. You're going to be able to say, you know, I appreciate everything you're going through. It just isn't for me. And it's time for us to move on. It's as simple as that. Yeah. And then with our kids, you got to protect your kids. I, I appreciate something you said, Jay, massively, which is we want to let our children have their childhood. And for some reason, a lot of people don't believe this is a good thing for children to have their childhood, to remain outside of all this madness as we're trying to change, shift, alter. A no, man, kids need to be kids and they should never be burdened with this kind of thing until it becomes age appropriate or they begin to ask some questions. And then age appropriately, we respond. We don't show a sixth grader hardcore porn in a book. As yeah. part of school materials, are you kidding me? Yeah. Now, if I was facing a school board like that, I'm yanking my kids, man. I'll figure oh, it out right after up. that. Yeah. They're out, huh. out, and I'll figure it out after that. Yeah, because yeah. that's a reaction. It, I have to take a protective reaction to that. It's not the the thing with my my situation is I, I did, I, I'm like, okay, I'm going to support you through this. This is something that you're going to do, blah, blah, blah. I don't agree with it. I, I let them know that I didn't agree with it. And that's not the biggest problem. It's the coping with the whole transition. And, and they've gone, they've turned to drugs. Their lifestyle has become very promiscuous, open relationship, lots of things that I've, I've, I'm, I'm out of, I'm out, I'm out, right? Like I'm not, I'm not, I'm not into open marriages and, and all of those lifestyles. It works for some people. It's not for me. It's, it's, I see right now, it's not really working for this person either. And they've gotten into drugs because drugs is like, well, that's what that whole community does. And, and it's a, like a plague on the community. Drugs is a plague on every community. And it's, I just hear these excuses, excuses, excuses. <laughs> But it's this downward spiral of like, well, I made this decision. So now I have to do this. Now I have to do that. And it just keeps going down and down and down. And I'm like, holy shit, I want to be there to support you. But I've got to have my safety in place too for myself and my children. And if you're, if you're a drug addict that's having a really hard time with life and you think cocaine is going to help you, I, I, if you want help getting out of that, okay, I can help you. If you're like, this is the solution, I'm out. <laughs> it's not It's not the solution. You need help. You need to get out of that. And until you're ready to do that and take those steps and stabilize your life and really find out who you are as a person and identify in your, maybe even in your new role, I don't know what to do for you because I can't just watch you slowly kill yourself pretty much in front of your family. It's just not, that's not the life I'm going to live, right? Get Get your shit together. And, and the crazy thing is, this is, this is what I do. This is how I want to help people in my day to day is, okay, you're ready to get your shit together. You want to stabilize your life. You want to figure out what all the pieces of the puzzle are so that you can have that stability so that you feel good when you wake up so that your body feels good so that your relationships are really thriving. And you, you have that connection with your family, your friends, your coworkers. How do we create that instead of just like the world is shit everyone's against me, no one's helping me, this is fucking horrible, and just digging into that victimhood. I can't, I can't help you there. I can't help you there. How do I get out of this? That's where I'm like, okay, let's do this. These are the things that you can do. This is the stuff that we can teach you. This is the things that are going to change your day to day. And we've done it. You've, you've done it for me. And that's, but it was work. It was so much work to do that you know, <laughs> you were there. You were, the, you were the one that was like, yeah, Jay, okay, well, this is going to take some fucking time. We're going to dig in though. Are you ready to do this? And I don't think there was a time when I got on there that I was like, I'm not willing to do the work. Correct. And that's, that is the key to it all for anyone looking to make some form of change in their life. And it's wonderful to experiment. Go ahead and experiment. Go ahead, play and figure it out if you, that's what you need to do. Where we're really missing the boat and by the way, I believe that every experience everyone has is perfect. I try not to judge because it's their life. They've been guided to that. They need to go down that rabbit hole. Let them go down the rabbit hole, but I don't have to go with you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right? I'm, I'm here. 
and I have boundaries. This is the key to everything is really understanding what you are and are not willing to do because we can get that white knight to the rescue kind of mentality going. And the next thing we know, we have de-evolved ourselves into this world trying to rescue someone and we're sacrificing ourselves in the process. That kind of martyrdom, nah. Mm -mm. And if someone no. needs to go down a rabbit hole, but they're going to be safe, I let them go. I did this with my children. I remember one time my daughter came to me with something. She came up with a plan. It was not a good plan, but it was a plan that wasn't going to get her hurt. Mm -hmm. So I let her go ahead and execute the plan. It didn't work. She stepped back and said, dad, it didn't work. I go, yeah, that, that didn't work. Good for you for trying. What else are you going to do? Then she came up with an adjustment that was a really good adjustment. I said, okay, give that a try. She went out there and did it. It worked out. She learned. See, our job is not to save everybody. Our job is to empower people to that grandest expression of their human potential. And we're raising adults, man. I don't know about you. I'm really happy my kids didn't end up living in my basement in at 30 years old. I can tell you that. Yeah. I mean, families are changing how those dynamics, but there's a certain point where you're like, I, I need to grow the fuck up. I have to be an adult here. I've got to pay bills and I've got to support myself and I got to you know cook food and all that stuff. And I think the sooner that we can prepare our children to, to take on those responsibilities, that's what it is to be a father. That's how you do the job. How, how do you're, you're pretty much working yourself out of the position. You know? Yes. Yes. That's the whole, that's the whole deal. And then you get this great friendship with your, your child after because right. you've, created this relationship of them taking care of themselves and i think that's what fatherhood is all about preparing your kids to be an adult and 100 percent, man don't do it don't with love give them, give them responsibility you do a really good job with this i remember when i was growing up you know my father it's kind of still hard for me to wrap my head around the dates you know it's like it's like what but you know my father was born in 1921 and my ah. grandmother was born in the 1800s. Think about it. And yeah. I'm only 62. Like these numbers still don't really gel in my mind, right? But that generation was um, children earned their keep, so to speak. It's like, it's like you bring in someone into your home and you say, yeah, I'm going to give you a room because you need that. But here's the expectations for your room you're going to keep the place perfectly spotless. You're going to go outside and do the yard work. You're going to do all the hard things that I don't have time to do. As you get older, I'm going to give you even more responsibility. You're going to do your own laundry. One day a week, you're going to prepare meals for the entire family. And when you make some money, you're going to actually contribute money into the household. Like you say these kind of things today and people think I was abused. Yeah. I was prepared early to be on my own and i don't regret a single bit of it and i don't think you know parents today would you know oh your dad was so hardcore no my dad was raising a man in hard times hard times make hard men and you better not have a soft man going into hard times he's gonna suffer yeah so that's what my dad did my dad was a hard man and he passed on that hardness that resilience to life's adversities in a really profound way of saying, this is how I'm going to raise a man. It's how you do it. And I think that right now there's so like, everybody's watching everything that everybody's, everybody's doing. So there's like cancel culture. If, what if I make a mistake? What if it, like something goes out there and then like my reputation is, is ruined. And as a father, like as a man, not even as a father, as a man, it's like, you're constantly tiptoeing around. You can't even give a compliment to somebody. It could be offensive. You can't eat meat because it's offensive. You can't breathe because it's offending someone. You know, it's like everything you do as a man is just crazy offensive all of a sudden. And you're like, whoa, wait a second. I'm a man. And these are the things that men do. You know, we, we can compliment people. We can eat meat. We can breathe. We're allowed to do these things. I'm going to scream and yell and, and, and go nuts when I'm like having a good time. I'm a loud person. It happens. <laughs> I recently got into this conversation online, this community about yelling and how they were like, never yell at your kids, never do this. Like yelling is the worst thing you do to your kids. And I'm like, yeah, 
in certain situations, but sometimes you need to yell at your kids and it's a tool that you use. Sometimes your kids are doing something, running into traffic and you know what I mean? And, and there's a car coming and you're like, hey, stop. You need them to stop when you yell. If someone's going to get injured, you need to be able to use that power and, and have that. And I've, I've taught my kids that sometimes you need to yell because that's the appropriate response. But then there are all these other times that it's not appropriate. So it's not like you just banish something because it, it might be offensive to somebody. Maybe it's something that needs to happen. And I think that parents are so scared to be authority and, and to lay down the law. And I'm not saying by no means am I saying yell at your kids all the time because it becomes ineffective. You've got to really be specific with how you use it. And to, to make sure that it's effective in a life or death situation, if somebody's going to get injured. But once again, like you said, with your, your daughter, like this, there was a plan and I just kind of let it happen. I do that with my kids all the time. If they're just being ridiculous and you're like, Oh, I, I bet you other dads would yell at this. I'm going to see how this goes and watch what the lesson is. <laughs> you know what? I just want to, I want to see it unfold more than anything to see what they learn out of it. But that's yes. what it is allow them to make the mistakes when it's safe. When it's not safe, what is the appropriate tool to use? And sometimes it's yelling. So it was really fun to get into those debates with people that were like, never yell at your kids. Well, no, I, sometimes I have to yell at me. Well, what about a dance party when we're all yelling and we're screaming and we're having a great time? Well, well, yeah, okay, that's okay. I'm like, but it's yelling. Like if you're putting this hard rule down, you're taking that away from children. You're taking away the fun of yelling. And it blows my mind. I went up to, I got a quick story for you. I went up to see uh, a friend up North and he's got a hundred acres of land in his backyard. He moved, he moved during COVID. He's like, we're out, we're gone. This is the apocalypse. And he moved up North and, and I went up there to see him and everything. And he's got two, two young kids. They were, I think they were like nine and 11 when I was up there and we're out on, like, it's just, this big hill and there's nothing but trees out there, hundred acres. And I'm like, oh my God, we could just scream. Ah, let's all scream. Three, two, one, go. And I was the only one that screamed. And the kids were like, well, what if somebody hears us? Like, what if somebody hears you? Who cares? Just scream. But the hard rule was there was no yelling in the house. There was no screaming. There was none of that. But then that also like just pence kids up. Like they're just so tight and they've got no release ever. And they just like, they can't do anything. It's just like, no, scream, yell, have emotions, feel it. What does it feel like to experience life at that level in those, in those wild moments? And we're taking that away from children. We're taking away their wildness and their curiosity and their, their experience of all these different emotions that are happening. Well, that's not, that's not the job. Don't numb your kids down from life. Let them experience it. How do you create those experiences for them to yell and go crazy and go nuts? And then like, give them the context around it. This is the time to do it. This is the time when we're going to bed. And like, that's what it is. You're navigating life for them so that they can experience all these different things. But we're not, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> You get it's, it. It's a very, very important concept to be adaptive, right? Because life is, you need to be adaptive to life. And you're right. It, it's this kind of crushing. And to this idea of being offensive, I opened a door the other day for someone because um, that's what I do. If somebody's close behind me as I'm going through a door, I just People step door. aside and I open up the door. I don't care who you are. I just open yep. up the door. And the person got offended and said, I don't need you to open my door. And I said, oh, but wait, because I like to play too. Yeah. Right? yeah. And I, I try not to step into this reactive, you know, oh, here's one of these people kind of idea. Right? It's more like I said, no, no, wait, you don't understand. I'm an equal opportunity door opener. And they look at me. I go, yeah, I open the door for everyone because I just believe in, in promoting kindness. Yeah. And it gave me one of those strange looks, but they walk through the door. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. And so it, you can see how so quickly when we're triggered to be offended, we're looking for everything in our world to be offended. Mm -hmm. Like we're literally that we're orienting our personal reality. Our radar has focused on 
What else in my environment is going to offend me today? Oh, my God. That is a lot of energy to be putting out every single day and dealing with life, right? I'm like, nah, not interested. So this idea of being flexible and adaptable, it applies to everything. It's kind of the theme of what we've been chatting about, right? We move in and out of relationships. We move in and out of life dynamics all the time. And a true sign of resilience is when we don't allow ourselves to be emotionally hijacked into some drama, some circus that someone else has, their monkeys, their circus, and we can get pulled into that, right? What if we just said, I'm not going to allow anything to pull me into it reactionally because I'm practicing the techniques, I'm doing the Zen Dad method, I am chilling myself to the point where I flow through life. Nothing wraps me around the axle. I'm not taking anything personally. And I will simply orient to the new experience that life has brought me and make my decision. If I'm going to go out and get a steak and that's the only thing on my plate, I'm going to eat it with gusto. If I decide I want to open doors for everyone that day, I'm going to do it with love. Not because yeah. I'm trying to yeah. prove a point, but because I just want to be a nice person. I want to open a door for another human being. If they get offended, that's their circus, their monkey. I don't need to play. I'm just holding yeah, the door yeah. open and I'm loving you. It's okay. You can go through the door. I do this for everyone. It, it's it's just the way that we can now navigate, right? And imagine the child who begins to look at life through that lens where instead of being offended about something or trenching into these ideologies, these dogmas, that belief, and owning that to the death, we simply said, I wonder what fun the universe is going to put in my space today. I wonder what interesting thing is going to happen to me. Oh, that person's offended for having a door open. Oh, you're offended because I said, no, sir. And you happen to look a thousand percent male, but you identify as something else, right? It's like, oh, I'm sorry that offended you. You know, yeah. you, you look masculine. I'm of a generation where respect meant you said, ma'am and sir. Apologize for that. I'm evolving. <laughs> I'm evolving. <laughs> And just have some fun with it, right? Because everybody's looking to looking to do this. They're looking to do this. That's Everybody easy. wants the fight. Everybody wants the fight. The fight is easy. What's not easy is taking a step back and getting over yourself a little bit and saying, how can I be the best human today? Mm -hmm. That's what it's about. I think we've got so much diversity. There's so it's divide and conquer, right? Divide and conquer. If everybody's fighting with each other on every single topic, there's no unity and we can't we can't evolve together. But that's the goal is getting to the next level of, of evolution. You know, how do we get past these problems together? That's how we do it. You know, all of these things that we hate so much about everybody else and everybody else's opinions. And how do we get past all of that together? So the the easier it is, or the 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 more we get together, the happier we'll be. That's what <laughs> that song. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. I can't believe that just happened naturally. That's wild. Oh my god! But that's the truth of it, though. And yeah. I think that when when we when we all as a as a consciousness together say, "Oh, how do we come together?" And I think it, I have this theory. I have this theory that all races are just, they're going to kind of disappear through sex. And we're just going to breed out racism because eventually it's all just going to blend together because we're this one giant global community now where all different races are getting into all different countries and relationships are happening. And it's, everybody's just going to be like this nice tan brown, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> give it a hundred years. There's, you're not going to be able to tell who's who, what's your background. Ah, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. I'm earthling. That's what it is. I'm earthling. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's, that's kind of going to naturally happen. What does that, what does that say for us now? Well, yeah, there's so much division. Oh, I've got this belief. I've got that belief. I'm, I want to be seen like this. I want to be seen like that. I, I see everybody as human. I see everybody as human. And I can even go a step above that and see, like, I see everything as life. Like I respect the animals that are in my, the squirrels that are in my backyard, the caterpillar that's, that's trying to get across the road. I don't want to squish them. I want to respect all life, regardless of where it is on the scale of however you see it. And when we look at it, that this is all part of me. This is all an extension of my life. Everybody that comes into it, every every living thing that I'm I'm connecting with 
all day long is a part of this experience of life. Well, now I want to protect it all. Now I want to serve it all. Now I want to help it all. And what's the best way to do that? Well, I've got to be in my best state. I've got to be optimal for me so that I can do that for everybody else. Right? So that's, that's right. And I want to I want to send out that love and that peace and that joy with everybody. And I want to open up the doors for people and be like, come on in, like wherever it is. I've 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 been doorman at so many places that I love that story because that's the same things happened to me. And I think that there's a lot of guys out there that they just they're having such a problem with being a nice guy. And I, I hate the nice guys finish last thing because that's going away like that whole nice guy image. Guys don't want to be it anymore because it's so many problems that come along with it. And you're yes. like, well, or, or what are we? Worse, they're shutting down. They're shutting down. So what well, are we? A lot of men in my age group are finding themselves out of relationship for whatever reason. Sometimes yeah. it's because their wife passed or sometimes it's because the relationship dissolved and they moved. And, you know, a hundred percent of them right now, I can't. Nope, I can't think of one. 100% are like, I'm done. Done. And when you query why, it's all the things we've been talking about. But they're just, the bottom line is, they're, they're feeling so beat up for being nice, kind, good guys. Yep. That they'd rather no longer engage with life. Which is to say, commit suicide. It's just not as dramatic, but you're just shutting down. I'm not no. going to go do anything. I'm not going to look anyone in the eye. I'm not going to cause any waves. Oh, did you just lose your ball sack? <laughs> oh, my God, dude, you got neutered. You let society neuter you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Horrible. That's yeah. horrible. So there's this idea of unconditional sack. love, right? Yeah. Well, unconditional love doesn't mean you set your ball sack on the nightstand and go out without it during the daytime. It means you still swing a pair and you go out there and be a good person and be a good human. Don't fucking apologize for being a good human being ever. Yeah. Never. And if someone's offended, okay, your circus, your monkeys, my heart's open. You can be offended. You can choose to do that. It's a free world. Good luck. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a hard day. You're probably going to set up your next interaction to be shit too. Meanwhile, I'll be happy and peaceful and kind, but I'm not going to apologize because I'm male. I'm not going to apologize for that, nor should you apologize for what you have decided to do, but don't jam it down another person's throat. Yeah. This is how we are going to de-evolve, and we are de-evolving. De -evolving. Right? Yeah. yeah. Here's what happens when we de-evolve, society collapses, and it's happened many, 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 many times before if you just take five fucking minutes to do a little history research yep. and so that's where we're at the groups that succeed it is not survival of the fittest individual it is survival of the fittest group that is in collaboration and community mm -hmm. the group that comes together in collaboration and unity is the group that survives you want to see something de-evolve to total destruction division and that's where we're at. So everything we do to help our children understand their part, who they are, and how they can be in the world in integrity and move the world forward in a positive way, instead of seeing what you can get from the world. I was recently reading a book called 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene. Okay. It's a textbook to be an asshole. It is the old process that everyone in today's generation, when they're angry and they say to me, okay, boomer, that's who they're referring to. Yes. Yeah. Ultra dominant people that are doing exactly what we've been talking about, jamming their philosophies, jamming their beliefs, getting all the money, get hoarding everything for themselves. This is the problem. Unity and collaboration. Don't be offended if I open a door. Take a look at me. I'm an old man. An old man opening a door for you is a threat. Are you out of your fucking mind? You're an idiot. Take a half a step back and get over yourself. It's yeah, an relax. old man opening a door for you because he's kind. How yeah. dare you read something else into it? Yeah. yeah. We, 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 need, we need gentlemen 
in the world. We need chivalry. We need, we need, it has been men who have built society and it's not perfect, mind you, but there are so many luxuries that the world gets because of the hard work of men and there's no appreciation for it. It's all been just cast aside because of uh, a very small percentage of assholes, which in a way the world is trying to create more of them. And it's, mm-hmm. it's, well, wait a second. What, what are you really supporting here? Support the guy that's trying to be nice. Thank them. I think that's, that's really what we need to be doing is thanking the people that are working so hard. And I'm not saying it's just men. There are many women out there that are supporting a kinder, loving world for sure. Let's, Definitely. let's support them, you know? And I, I think there's something to be said for dads specifically, because it's a transformation happens when you become a, a father on so many levels, but also on a, on a physical level, your testosterone levels drop so that you can be kinder so that you can love your children. There's, there's a uh, uh, profound things that happen when you become a father so that you can be a nicer guy. And it is, it is, it blows me away at the expectations that the world has on fathers right now. It is so overwhelming for almost every, every man I know, every guy that I know that's a father is like, holy shit, this is a lot. This is it's way more than what I, I signed up for. But the crazy thing is these guys are like, how do I do it anyway? Right. How do I show up anyway and still kick ass and take names and enjoy myself? What's the secret sauce? You know, it is. and it's, 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 it is, it is definitely a task to take on. And it's any task, that's doing it, a, I fucking support it. 100% doable. Yeah. Yeah, it 100% is. 100% doable. And if you think it isn't, well, that's what this is all about. This is to give you a little bit of an idea of how to take those steps and evolve into that amazing human being. I was super happy to have had two daughters. They calmed down a lot of testosterone and they really (laughs) opened up my heart. There's no way a daughter is, you can't not open your heart to your daughter. I'm not saying you can't to your son either, but girls are special like that. Yeah, yeah. it was awesome. I mean, they've helped me evolve into who I am today. And my children played a huge role in that. Huge role in that. So remember, too, this is something that I think we can get a little wrapped around the axle about. Parenting is really hard and it takes all of your energy, all your bandwidth. It's your number one priority. If it isn't, it certainly should be. And what's left at the end of that for you? What's left at the end of that for you is if you embrace it fully, if you step into like what you're doing with the Zen dad method and what I'm doing with coaching the dads, if you can step into owning parenting fully, you will evolve. That is priceless. That's the gift back to you. It seems sometimes like fatherhood and the kids are taking, 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 and you feel depleted, you run down. It's because you've lost sight of the gift, the gift that's coming to you every day. Is it a slow Mm. grind? Yeah, some days. Is it a wild joy? Yeah, some days. And so it's all of that mixed together. Never forget that this is your journey of evolution too. Are you taking full advantage of that? Are you pushing that? to its absolute limits that help you become the best person you could possibly be. Cause that's the opportunity that is so often missed in today's world. So well said. So well said. I don't even know what to add to that. That was beautiful. Mic drop, <laughs> Mic drop right there, dude. I think we just had a great conversation. I love that. Yeah. Let's, let's continue to do these. Are you up for more of these? Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm.